thing about Bells in 81 was that um, we hadn't had a big swell for five years. There it was that morning, 10 to 12 foot Bells Beach, some 15 foot waves coming through. And there wasn't a drop of water out of place and it was a lovely sunny day. So it looked fantastic. To launch the thruster design in waves of that magnitude, you know, it's kind of a, a special day. Growing up at Collaroy, my father used to take us to the pool. So we'd see the surfers in the water while surfing looked like a better option than swimming in the cold Collaroy pool. So uh, that's probably where the idea of surfing first materialized. When I first started shaping, um, obviously it was less sophisticated. Just seemed natural at the time, uh, but looking back at, at the equipment today, you know, you look at it and go, wow, must have been a good surfer to surf that sort of thing. Because the blanks also were pretty chunky and thick and the planers, the power tools that we were using back then were for the most part pretty big and cumbersome and hard to operate, so that made it a lot more difficult. I think, um, yeah, pretty much every time you, you go in the shaping bay and you, you kind of do get in the zone, particularly if you're um, shaping a board that you're interested in. Kind of gives it a, a special significance and you can really get into it and as the board develops, as you go through the processes and gets closer to the end, um, you know, it kind of gets a little bit exciting because uh, you can see that it's uh, forming up pretty nicely. It just gives you that added dimension being a, a shaper to be able to create your own equipment to improve your surfing and maybe take surfing to the next level. I've done a lot of boards over the years, and, but I imagine it's something like 20,000 uh, without thinking about it too deeply. Uh, shaping dust is probably the easiest thing that you have to deal with within the surfboard factory. Uh, the fumes from the resin and the sanding dust, I, I think, uh, uh, nastier stuff. You know, back then it wasn't the dream tour, it wasn't like today, and we'd find ourselves surfing some pretty crappy waves at times, and the twin fin was a far superior design and board to surf in those sort of conditions. I just found that the size that I am, it felt way too loose and uncontrollable, but the single fin in comparison was slow and felt stiff compared to the twin fin. So I kind of had this dilemma, this problem that I was facing, and that was really what in the end directly resulted in the development of the three fin board. I felt that uh, it was taking surfing to this new dimension that we hadn't seen before, where you would connect your turns with speed and control and with more flow than we'd been able to do before. Uh, there was still doubts that the design would work in Hawaii and so I had a bit of a mission in 81 to, to prove that was not the case or to disprove the, the doubters. I guess to win in 81 I fulfilled the mission for that year and 
I proved the thruster would work in all conditions around the world and uh, it was a great moment for me. You know, if, if, you, if the surf's good and you get a couple of good waves and you surf those waves to a level that you're happy with, uh, you get this great feeling of satisfaction and enjoyment and fulfillment and you, know, you come home to your wife and family, a happier person, a better father, better husband, so I'd, I'd recommend it.